welcome Suffolk One and welcome to the Geography Department. Um, I'm Abby Lord and there are two of us that teach Geography, myself and Rachel, who isn't here this evening. I'm so sorry that you're unable to come into the college. Um, it's so much nicer to be able to meet each other and for you to be able to ask questions. But we're going to see um, if we can offer you some information about how Geography is run here, what we do, um, and what the course actually involves. So um, looking at the PowerPoint that I hope you can see, um, we have taken each of these photographs as we've been out in the field. So we go to uh, Walton on the Hayes, we go to Iceland, we go to the Bay of Naples, um, and we go and look at some really phenomenal landscape. Um, part of being a geographer is that you want to be outside. So we tend to try and get out once every um, sort of term, certainly once every half term with a year 12 or a year 13 group. And we aim to try and encourage you to find um, an interest that you will want to look at to complete coursework on. So here are the two of us actually in, in front of the Spaticone in Iceland last year. Um, and we had a phenomenal time. Um, it's a very exciting course. You get to uh, discuss, evaluate, assess, you get to um, look at uh, different data and analyse what they show, um, and we will help you through that. <clears throat> so as I've said, there are the two of us in the department, um, and you will have two sessions of geography each week. So you'll have a session with Rachel and a session with myself, and we both teach a combination of the human and physical elements of the course. So um, we are both physical and human geographers, and we hope that we can provide a well-rounded experience for all of you. Some of the topics that we look at, you will have done at GCSE. Some of the topics we look at, you will not have studied before. Um, and that makes life a little bit, I think, more exciting, more interesting, to be honest. Um, we'll introduce you to a number of case studies and we'll have a look at getting you out into the field as often as we can. OK, so here is P200. This is currently where I'm sitting in front of the board. Um, <clears throat> it's a very active room. Uh, we have lots of debate. We have lots of discussion. We have lots of uh, problem solving from the trading game to um, using all sorts of different skills to increase your uh, knowledge. Uh, we cover a number of case studies, as I said before, and we have a look at numerous topics. So our geographers are a good community. They work well together. Um, both year 12 and year 13 integrate really nicely, and we do really occupy most of the upper level here at the end of Suffolk One, which is where the classroom is situated. <clears throat> OK, so obviously at the moment there's lots of restrictions with COVID. Uh, we are looking to go still in March to Iceland if uh, the government raise or remove their restrictions. I don't know how likely that is. So uh, the following year, I'll ask you, do you fancy going to Iceland or would you like to go to the Bay of Naples? So here are some of the things that we go and look at in Iceland. We go to the Blue Lagoon. It's one of the seven wonders of the world. It's amazing. It's really, really lovely. Um, we also go and have a look at a glacier. We have a look at glacial retreat and we look at the carbon capture within the glacier. We have a look at the outwash plains and we have a look at um, the icebergs that exist in the lake uh, at the snout of the glacier. We also have a look at the work of a waterfall. We get to walk behind a waterfall, which is really special and quite beautiful. And we have a look at um, the culture of Iceland. We have a look at um, Afa Yoko, and we have also had um, or taken, we take the time to go and have a look at uh, the Black Beach <coughs> on the um, coastline, which is again highly fascinating and really dynamically beautiful. Um, so, when we go uh, on these residentials, we go for four days, three nights, and we cover a huge amount um, looking at things. So, someone's just asked, how much do these trips cost? So Iceland the year before cost us um, £850 per person, which I think is actually uh, very good in price in comparison to what other, some, um, what other schools seem to be able to offer. Um, so start saving if you're thinking you would like to join uh, me and the rest of the team. The Bay of Naples is the other option. So we do a residential each year. This is Italy. It's um, in the uh, near to Sorrento and the Isle of Capri. We walk up Mount Vesuvius. It's the most fascinating volcano. It's really well managed and monitored. Um, so it's very safe and you get to see it from within Pompeii because I take you to Pompeii. We go for um, a boat ride around the Isle of Capri. Uh, it's where all the movie stars live and it has some fantastic coastal features. 
so we have a look at how the um, undercutting has occurred. We actually drive through an arch, which um, is really something. It's really quite quite wonderful. Uh, we go and have a look at the sulphur tar sites um, that exist, and we also go into Naples to have a look at how um, Italians uh, live uh, culturally, how it works, <clears throat> and we also have a look at how water was introduced to the city. So we go down beneath the city itself and have a walk through the, via the sort of aqueducts and all of the water. It's, it's fascinating. It's beautiful. It's um, it's very historic, um, but it's also about how valuable a commodity uh, water is and how it enabled the Italians to really develop very, very quickly. Um, Vesuvius is a fantastic opportunity. And um, I think every geographer should have the opportunity to walk up a dormant or sleeping volcano. And it is almost a textbook volcano. You get to look into the crater, you get to see it steaming. Um, and it really is um, a lovely day. We spend the morning walking up and it doesn't take quite a long time. Um, and don't panic, we don't walk from the bottom, we get coached halfway through. <laughs> um, so we do take you to more local um, areas as well. So part of our uh, physical unit post and coastal management. So I hope a number of you have done this at GCSE. It gives you a good foundation to start from. Um, and we have a look at how to um, read shoreline management plans. We have a look at how uh, management is operated within different areas. And we take you to Walton to have a look at the um, crumbling cliffs. We have a look at um, the management that they have in place. And we also take you to start getting you used to using fieldwork equipment. So um, we like to use ArcGIS. It's a phenomenal piece of kit um, and it is really uh, something that geographers do need to know how to use. It'll also aid you when you go to university. And alongside that, we use a Survey123, an app that you can have on your phone that allows you to go out into the, um, well, wherever you want to be, um, and actually record data using um, their GPS system. And it is spectacular. The data you get back is fantastic. Um, and we get to analyse that with, in detail. So Walton is one of many localised trips. We also go to Sizewell. Um, we go and have a look at what nuclear power is about. EDF is a phenomenal country, um, company, huge opportunities there, um, which uh, we will introduce you to. And obviously it's going to be a very large employer in this region um, in the coming years as they get to build the Sizewell Sea uh, site itself. So we go to uh, Walton, as I said, Sizewell. We also go to Minsmere. We go and have a look at management of uh, freshwater marsh. We also go and have a look at um, how carbon stores exist and how as um, climate change occurs, how things will change in the future. So we go and have a look at the carbon footprint and carbon exchange that's in operation there. Um, and we also have a little bit of a revision as to how buns work and how uh, levies operate. Um, aside from that, we go to London. We take you to the Isle of Dogs. I think it's really important that you understand how the financial uh, market works. Um, and we go to the Museum of London to look at migration. We also look at the slave trade and we also look at regeneration of an area, which um, again, you may have covered at GCSE. Some of you will, some of you won't. There are different topics that your teachers currently will have chosen and selected for you. So they are just a handful of um, opportunities. Uh, we have in the past, uh, because people have been interested in doing it, gone to the Volkswagen in Hanover, which we did as a day trip. It was exhausting, but it was also incredibly fascinating. We had the opportunity to look around the factory, um, which is all motorised and mechanically organised by robots. It is fascinating. Um, and again, a real adventure. So hopefully um, you'll come with some ideas of where you might like to go and perhaps we'll be able to incorporate those into the course. OK, so what does the specification actually include? That's the really fun bit. That's what we do on a, on a sort of term by term basis. So there are four papers. <clears throat> Paper one is worth 30 percent and is on the physical topical areas. So tectonic processes and hazards, looking at hazard management, looking at three different hazards of earthquakes, volcanoes and tsunamis. We also look at coastal landscape and change um, and we look at the management along there. We also incorporate the hydrological cycle as our topic. We look at water insecurity. This covers political um, instability. It also covers uh, water treaties that exist globally um, and it links into problems and concerns 
uh, through climate change as well and how we are changing the hydrological cycle, moving rainfall patterns away from where we currently expect them to fall. So areas are suffering more from droughts than ever before. And um, we also look at the carbon cycle, very important at the moment, as I'm sure you're aware. We look at the level of industrialization. And we also look at whether we have energy security um, or insecurity and if that will improve or decrease over time. So we look at things like geothermal power and we uh, incorporate that into our visit to Iceland. We go and have a look at that. We talk about the biomass plant at Great Blakeney. Um, we have a look at the green alternatives to uh, reducing CO2 emissions into the atmosphere. So lots and lots of opportunity there and lots of employer opportunity as well um, within that area. Paper two is a more human paper. It looks at globalisation. It looks at our interconnectedness. It also allows us to, um, to distinguish between countries that have developed and countries that are developing. We have a look at the impact a TNC can have on a country and also the benefits that that country can have. Alongside that, we look at superpowers. So the British Empire, we have a look at how that reacted um, and how that still has an involvement. So we look at countries that are connected. We look at the trade that we still have with some of those countries and many, many other things involved in that area. It's a really good area for geopolitics. It's fantastic. Um, you will be covering not regeneration. We've um, made a decision this year to uh, look at diverse places, a bit of a change, because we feel that diverse places now is becoming more um, uh, relevant to what's going on globally. So looking at the migration of people, the changes in population. So what does an ageing population mean to the UK? What does a youthful population mean to countries like Germany, for example? How do they compare? How will they compete with one another? Um, how does China link in with um, its culture and its firewalls and all of those things? So again, a really interesting topic area. We also look at human rights within this paper. We look at migration, we look at slavery, um, we look at modern day slavery, we look at workshops, we look at child um, slavery as well. <clears throat> and again, we look at where your identity and sovereignty comes from. What makes you you? Um, and are you happy with the label that you may be um, given? OK, paper three is more exciting. Um, it's also the harder paper, I think, of all three. Uh, it is a paper that allows you to read um, and they provide you with a magazine style booklet on a topic area. So we've had different topics in the past. One has been on coastal flooding linked to climate change and the oil industry. We have had um, one that's been linked to superpowers and industry and industrial development, transnational corporations and their spread globally. Um, and we've also had one linked to, oh gosh, it's just left me, um, and, and another topic which was health. Um, I can't remember, apologies. I'm sure it'll come back to me. Okay, paper four then is also 20% like paper three. And paper four is a non-examined assessment piece of coursework. So this is what we have prepped you for all the way through your first year, your year 12 here, where we will take you out into the local community to have a look at inequality. Does it exist between Chantry and Belstead? And um, we'll also take you down to the uh, Ipswich waterfront to have a look at regeneration. And again, does inequality exist within the different boroughs that exist in that, in that area? Um, we take you to the coastline to use surveying equipment. And as I said before, we will use ArcGIS and the survey one, two, three, to get you used to handling and analysing your data. We had a really good outcome last year, 14 um, A stars um, and numerous A's in our um, coursework. And um, we had overall an 85% A star to C um, outcome, which we have been thoroughly um, overjoyed with because the students, you, you get to choose your own titles. Um, and I think we are uh, quite unique in that way. Some colleges tend to go on a residential where they go out all together and collect data and then they have to answer a specific title and um, you get the opportunity to do that for yourself. So what are you interested in? Do you want to look at um, inequality or crime rates <clears throat> across a certain area? Are you interested in um, plant species across a salt marsh? Or in fact, as we've had in the past, someone who travelled to uh, Mount Vesuvius uh, who looked at old and recent volcanic eruptions and lava flows and looked at the fauna and flora, so the rate of um, erosion caused by plants. Are you more interested in new development and the impact that that will have 
or local services? Or are you, in fact, more interested in migration, the multicultural elements of Ipswich or Bury or Colchester? You have a huge, huge number of topics to be able to choose from and you will come up with your own title and then we will guide you with that. I think you're very lucky to be able to do that. Um, so that's quite exciting. OK, so your NEA, we have a huge amount of equipment here that you will be able to borrow. So you can see um, one of our students using the floodlight um, and again, our quadrats that um, you can take out into the field. Um, Harriet still sent me a question asking if uh, and when we do our field work dissertation, if we have more than one teacher, do we just complete this in the lesson of the subject area we have chosen or both lessons? Rachel actually is the lady in charge of field work. She will um, lead you and guide you through, and I support that. So I am available for one to ones. We can discuss your title. We can, um, and, and we basically, we share the responsibility, but within Rachel's lessons for a set period of time, you will have the opportunity to complete field work. Um, we actually expect that field work in after uh, October half term. So our students at the moment have a few weeks left before they can hand their dissertation, uh, their NEA in. And it means then that. Um, we, we can get that out of the way and then focus on the exam skill, which I think is important. OK, so some people have uh, contacted us to ask what you're going to need for geography. Um, and it really does depend on how college starts in 2021. We have not got any idea yet, and I don't think anybody else does globally. So we use um, this textbook, which we have available for you. You do not have to go out and purchase it. But if it's something that you would like to have a look at, there is an ebook online so you can have a flick through just to see what it's like. Um, or you're welcome to order your own. I'm sure there must be now secondhand ones available. So do have a look at um, Amazon, that would be much better. Um, and we do have the textbooks on our e resource list. So when you come into college, you will be given a login and the ability to be able to access those e resources. But I know some of you like to have a hand, a copy that you can hold in your hand and flick through and look through. So again, it's there if you're interested, um, but really you shouldn't need to buy your own textbooks. We do have enough in college. OK, so what do people do after Suffolk One? Where do they go? What do they, what do they study? Um, so you've done two years and five years of geography. So seven years does make you a very good geographer. Um, and we really do get you to be an independent learner. And we get you, I hope, interested in a specific area. Um, someone today came and said that she's really interested in the historic context of um, treaties and she wants to go and work for the United Nations. And so we had a look today at um, international affairs and history, um, which the UEA are actually running at the moment. And it's a course that seems to have completely excited Ruby, who is now going to go and um, inquire a little bit further, find out what's actually involved. But we have lots of people who go off to do different things. Oceanography, looking at how our oceans are working, how the health of our oceans is um, in conflict at the moment. Coral reefs are dying. Um, if you watched the news yesterday, you'll be aware of that. Um, some people enjoy the more physical, the geological side. So we've had people go off to um, different universities to look at geology and to um, study that, some of which are now working for mining companies. Um, Chris is working currently um, in uh, Madagascar, interestingly. Uh, looking at ores. We've got people who are studying volcanology and um, Safi who did her uh, dissertation, her, her NEA, on the flora and fauna on um, Vesuvius. So unsurprisingly, she's gone on to study volcanology. Climatology, we have a very good link with the UEA. Um, we do some live uh, interactive things with them. Uh, they have an incredible uh, climatology department um, with members of the IPCC, the Inter um, from Climate Change. So, uh, again, really, really nice. Lots of people go into surveying. Don't know why. Um, I, I don't find it that exciting, but it is interesting to do. Um, but that often links them with uh, local businesses. Um, and it's a very good uh, way to earn a very nice salary. So um, again, very, very pleasing. Town planning, international affairs, hydrology, economics, geopolitics, all of those things um, are areas that we cover and that may really interest you. Um, there are various courses now around energy sustainability. Can you be the next person to offer a solution to this climate change and the CO2 emissions that we still have? Are electric cars the way forward? Do we produce that electric um, via nuclear power or do we in fact use other alternatives? So again, lots and lots of courses that you may be interested in. Carbon capture, another one. Forestry, another. 
Um, food security officers, um, again, is that something that you're interested in? Are you going to take biology with geography and look at environmental studies? Um, and again, one of our um, uh, students is now, he's uh, finished university, last year he finished, and he's now the Air Quality Officer for Colchester. Um, so again, there are lots and lots of opportunities that can come from geography. You are hugely employable once you have done your A-levels because you can do all manner of things handle data, present well, you have confidence with your um, opinion and your conclusions that you can draw, you can evaluate, you are um, able to assess, um, and they are very strong factors for employees that, that people want, if you're looking for people to employ. Some people don't want to go to university, it's fine. Uh, we've also had quite a number take up apprenticeships. We have some um, now in Suffolk County Council, uh, some in the planning office um, who are working whilst they're at university, they come back and work uh, in their uh, holiday. So that's also good. Anglian Water have taken on uh, a number of students and Anglian Water are a mammoth company. They have all sorts of opportunities there. One of our students at the moment is working to try and remove chlorine from um, the local water supply so that uh, they're trying to find different methods because um, we know that chlorine isn't good. Um, and we are trying, or they are trying to remove it. And one of our students, our class students, is actually part of that, that team. Um, EDF, who runs Sizewell, we can introduce you to the uh, apprenticeship programme there. And they have actually incorporated recently a sort of higher level apprenticeship to um, offer once you have done either university or once you've completed your A-level course. So again, opportunities to exist. And they are going to become a very big employer um, in this local area in the coming years. The Environment Agency, again, we have them, they usually come in. Um, lots of the um, organisations here will come in and industry will come in and visit us or will link with us over a Teams meet so they can talk about the jobs they do um, and offer then um, suggestions and possibilities for yourselves. Coastal Protection Officer, again, uh, six years ago, I've been teaching here a long time, one of our students now is the Flood Management Officer for um, Suffolk and Essex. Um, and Phoebe is doing incredibly well. She actually works for the Environment Agency um, and she adores her job, loves it. Um, and that's very pleasing for us. Um, lots of people are linked to surveying companies, some of which operate from Essex, some of which operate from Ipswich. Um, so huge amounts of opportunities there. Some people choose to take a year out, they go and travel. They might choose to um, work for a charity or an agency. We've had some people work for um, aid agencies, some people work for uh, war trade, some people who've gone and done rally expeditions, some people who've gone um, and worked for all manner of organisations. Um, and they have always been very successful. In fact, they have always been employed by those charities after they have spent a year working for them. And I think that really does show just how much um, geography can prepare you for the world of work. Operation Wallacea is an, also an opportunity that we hope to be able to offer you. We can't offer it this year because of COVID, um, but again, they have asked us to go um, to uh, do some surveying of old farmland um, in a specific country um, in Croatia. That's where they've asked us to go. Um, and again, we had set up the links for that to be able to organise a trip over the summer for a week to go and do some of that surveying. So to get really into the science and the data handling field, again, with opportunities. In fact, one of our students this year, um, Izzy, she has managed to work for them in the past. Uh, she went to do some uh, recording in the Amazon rainforest where she counted bats and beetles, not my kind of thing, but um, if it's your kind of thing, brilliant. And they have actually offered to sponsor her through her university degree. So she's very excited. So lots of opportunities. Lots of ability to get out into the field, operate and work with data. Um, and we look forward to seeing you here next year. Um, please do not leave it too late to enrol, um, as in to apply for a place. Places are um, limited, so uh, just be aware of that. Um, and we are always oversubscribed, um, which can become quite difficult. But um, I look forward to joining with you um, face to face, hopefully not virtually, and um, to come and join us at our outstanding college. Um, I hope to hear from you all soon.
question is what qualifications uh, are needed to study geography A level? OK, so we ask for a level five in maths and English. The reason for that is um, because of the statistical approach to data. Um, if, however, you don't achieve a five in maths, um, we will ask you to take on core maths as a subject, which is run here. It's an additional A level, which you um, study, but on a one lesson a week basis with no homework at all. Um, and what it does is it just keeps you up with your numerical skill. Um, and we have to say, I have to say that the team that run the core maths um, area are highly skilled. They look at real data, real scenarios, so working out real maths, if that makes sense. It just keeps you numerically active. Um, it means that you're at a much better level when you go into the exam. Thank you for asking the question. And you have another question, Abby. Uh, what would be better subject to take with geography, economics or business? I have to say, I think um, economics and business are very similar. I think those people that do economics with geography um, are much better at the geoeconomic element of the course. But those people who do business are actually a little bit better at um, the what I call the globalisation section of the course. So I don't think there's very much in it. And I think either of those courses are very good with geography. Um, I think they work very well and I think they allow you to go on with your studies um, at university using either both areas together mixed or one area specifically. I'm not sure if that person. Oh, yeah, right. They've given you a like there, Abby. I don't know why you okay, can't see the brilliant. No, uh, I can't. I don't know either. OK, don't mind. Uh, I can't see any more questions at the moment. Okay. There are many subjects that you can take with geography. Um, we have a huge variety from um, photography to English to maths to the sciences and um, physics, chemistry, biology. And geography is recognised as a science, so it's um, quite nice. Uh, if you are scientifically led, but want to be able to do something a little bit less um, lab orientated, um, it can be taken as a BA at university or a BSc. OK, well, thank you, everybody. I hope to meet you in September. I hope you can um, get online and do the application. It will be good to meet you um, in the in next year. Bye.